Yeah, to, Kyle and I, I mean, as soon as I got sober, I mean, Loverboy was started, Kyle put the idea to paper, I believe, in 2018, officially. Mm -hmm. Like, he had verbally kind of talked about it in 2017. And then, fast forward to 2019, the product was on the market. I was working there full time. I was an investor. I'm not a co founder, technically, but I am, you know, one of the founding members of the company. And my own personal journey started to go a different direction. Yeah. You know, and I think being a salesperson at an alcohol company, it, it's kind of expected when you go to a meeting to pitch the product that you drink yeah. your own stuff. And I was always drinking my own stuff, lover boy, and passing it off to the bartenders or the owners or every meeting I went to, I was drinking. Mm -hmm. And, you know, over time that would spill into my behavior at work and my relationships with customers or clients, my performance, you name it. People started to notice that, you know, I was hitting it a little bit too hard or mm -hmm. got into an argument with someone at a, an event or didn't want to come to a meeting the next morning because I was hungover or whatever it was. I learned a lot early on, like, the alcohol industry is also a business and I needed to like recognize that like my personal life, I needed to like really just understand like when I'm, I'm working in a business, it's not all about partying at the business. Yeah. I kind of needed to separate the two. I was able to do that, but also then my own personal s struggle continued even harder. You know, I struggled mm -hmm. with substance use like cocaine and drinking and cocaine went hand in hand for me. So yeah, like it was hard, obviously, but I did learn a lot over the, t the years of working and then getting sober at a company that sold alcohol. A very powerful person in the industry pulled me aside, and this was about a year into my sobriety, and he basically had heard from social media and from TV that I was sober. Mm -hmm. He said, hey, I'm 19 years sober, and he's a very powerful person in the beer and alcohol industry. Oh, okay. And that gave me a lot of confidence because he said, don't worry that you're sober. Like a lot of people don't drink in this industry. And that was the first time I kind of had that kind of, oh my gosh, like I could actually be in this industry and be happy and not feel awkward or weird. But at the same time, he, like I'm the face of a brand. Yeah. It's not just like I'm sitting behind a desk. And I know Kyle and Amanda also are the big faces of it. It's their baby. I've been a big supporter of that. But it became very conflicting being the face of a brand that I wasn't consuming. Mm -hmm. And then just from a job standpoint what I was doing I was the VP of sales for about three years which is I was good at that but I wasn't necessarily the right fit after a period of time we were nationwide I mean, 40 states wow not just here in New York like there's alcohol is massive and there's a lot of stores there's a lot of distributors I couldn't handle it all and I also was doing the events you know Monday, Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. I'm on my computer on phone calls mm -hmm. then from 7 p.m. to midnight I'm Carl from Summer House holding a lover boy yeah. in the hand and people are coming to see me and Kyle and Amanda and to drink the brand but it was a lot so it was important for me I think to kind of step back and realize like what is the best fit for me but yeah like I always had hoped and dreamed Loverboy would have a non-alc we had talked about it but I don't think the industry I don't think I even personally believe the industry we could I saw athletic beer a couple of years ago before I got sober and I was like what is this yeah you know and I even me so I think Kyle was kind of a couple years ago thinking, oh, like, there's really not much of a market for it or it's not really a big thing. And I think he saw with my own personal journey, because I was trying so many different products the last three years, from Budweiser Zero to Heineken Zero mm -hmm. to all these different mocktails. And guess what I learned? Mocktails and NA beer still has a ton of carbs and a ton of sugar. What is Loverboy? Loverboy was designed and created because we wanted a better for you alternative to like a twisted tea, which is loaded with sugar. Mm -hmm. So Loverboy by design was always about high quality ingredients, zero sugar, no carbs, or one one or two carbs. So we basically applied that same ethos and mantra to our non-alcoholic ideas. Mm -hmm. Because like, like I said, you go to Boisson or any non-alcoholic store right now, grab a beer off the shelf and look how many carbs are in it. Probably 15 to 20 carbs in a beer. Just because a non-alcoholic beer, just because I'm not drinking, doesn't mean I want to replace it with five loaves of bread. Yeah. So we apply all that same kind of mentality with Loverboy to the non-alcoholic products. So the NAs that we have now, 10 calories, zero sugar, one carb. All ingredients you can pronounce, things that make sense, 